In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build this elite top welding fixture table from True Focus Laser and Design. My name's Andrew, and we are gonna be assembling this table from a flat pallet all the way up to this full-size table. This table that I got is a 60 inch by 36 inch table with a 3 8 thick top on it. There's a lot of different options on True Focus Laser's website. They go from two foot by three foot all the way up to a five by 10, and they come in a quarter inch, three eighths, or half inch top. I chose this three eighths top because it's still pretty affordable, but it really gives you a solid work surface for any kind of just general welding, anywhere from your at home garage up to a full fabrication shop. I got the optional leg kit on this table that includes two by two legs and six inch casters that make this thing super easy to roll around the shop. Now I'll show you how to build your own. True Focus Laser sent us this nice checklist to make sure we had all the parts for the table before we started working on it. If your table didn't come with a checklist, you might wanna check with your manufacturer to make sure you have everything and they didn't forget any parts. When you receive your pallet, grab your tabletop and use some pieces of wood at least three or four inches tall to space your tabletop off your work surface. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the good side of the table is face down. We're gonna build this entire table upside down, so when you flip it over, you want the good side to be on the top, because that's gonna be your work surface. These are all the tools that we use to build this fixture table. So at minimum, we'll have a welder, obviously, and then a few different styles of clamps. The best types of clamps I found are these steel bar clamps or C clamps, because they have a ton of gripping power. You can also just use these fixture table clamps to hold everything together. We also use a flap disc with an angle grinder, some files, dead blow hammer, flashlight, um, two levels, impact gun with a 14 mil socket, 3 8 by seven inch bolts, 3 8 nuts and washers, and then True Focus Laser sent us these cool plates that we can use to clamp the slats to the table using these bolts. So if you know anything about welding, you know that prep is the most important step in building a nice end product. We're gonna go around the entire perimeter and prep everything using a flap disc and a file. We're gonna make sure the entire surface is clean of any kind of slag or debris, debris, sorry. All these alignment holes, we're gonna use a file and an angle grinder to clean those out. Our slats are gonna be going horizontally and vertically across this entire surface. So it needs to be as perfect as it can be before we start. So now that we have our top all prepped, we're gonna grab a side and we're gonna prep it exactly the same. Just like the top, make sure all your surfaces are prepped and ready to go. With all of our parts prepped, we're ready to grab our slats and put them into place. So when you're putting your slats in, you wanna make sure that the side with the opening facing up is going in first so that you can put the side with the opening facing down inside of those. So our slats are all in and you might see this small gap under here. Uh, that's not something to worry about. Those are gonna go away as soon as we bolt everything together and clamp it down tight. I'm building this table by myself, so I'm gonna start with the longer side. This one's a little bit more difficult to line up if you have to worry about two other sides while you're pushing this on. A little trick that I like to do when I'm building these tables is to cut this wood a little bit long so I can just set my side on there, especially the longer side. This one gets pretty heavy if you're trying to line up 15 spots at once, so you can set it on that wood and just slide it in. I'm just starting on one end and I'm gonna start pushing these ribs into place and then you can start clamping as you go. And this whole side can be held on with like one or two clamps really is all you need. I'm gonna grab my persuader to help me along here. Just kind of tap everything and push pressure on. I'll just start pushing these into place with the hammer. Um, you can kind of tap the slats around to get everything to fit up really nice. We're just gonna loosely fit up this side, so don't worry about any kind of gaps or whatever. We're just gonna fit all the pieces on first and clamp it all together. It's starting to look like a table now. So we're gonna use our clamp down plates along with our seven inch by three eighths bolts. And these are gonna go over each of the rib intersection points. Um, on this table, they'll be about 28, but some of the tables are bigger, like 50. It gets pretty tedious, but um, this is a really important step to make sure your whole table is flat before you start welding. Once you have all your clamping plates installed in your table, go ahead and tighten them all down with your 14 and your impact, just enough to where they're starting to flex down a little bit. That'll be enough 
tension to, to flatten out that whole tabletop for you. When you're tightening down these plates, it doesn't really matter what order you do. I just like to move from one side of the table to the other, but I haven't seen a difference doing any other pattern. So we've got everything tightened down and now it's time to grab our welder and start welding. So we're gonna grab these bigger clamps. These are the best for welding. These are good just for holding plates on, but they're not really strong enough to like close the gap with everything. I'm gonna start at one corner of the table and just work my way around the perimeter and close the gap as I weld each section. Once I have the perimeter welded, I'll go ahead and weld the center. So I like to use a C-clamp and close this gap here up. You'll see when I crank down on it, that gap's gonna close. And that's how you know that you're nice and flat. And you'll do that along each section of these ribs all the way around the whole table. I like to use a flashlight to check the gaps with the table. If you can see light through the table, that means it's not flat. Once everything is nice and clamped down, we can't see any light behind the, the slats. We're gonna go ahead and start welding. We're gonna do a high weld here, about an inch tall, and then a low weld, about an inch tall. On that bottom one, it's actually gonna be three welds. We're gonna hit each of these three sides with that weld to make sure everything's locked together. So we're only gonna do an inch long weld because if we're doing a full weld on this thing, by the time you're done, you're gonna have 10 feet of weld and this whole table is gonna still warp like a banana. So you just need just enough weld to hold everything together. So an inch is plenty. So we're gonna do this first section of weld here and then we're gonna move our clamps down, tighten everything again, check it with a flashlight and then weld again. And we'll do that process all the way around the table. But just a side note, on these corners, you don't wanna weld too high up here. There's gonna be a leg plate that goes in here. So you wanna leave room for that plate to fit. Uh, this should go without saying, but the most important thing is to make sure you don't have any gaps where you're welding. If you can see light and there's a gap, that probably means your table's not flat in that section. So before you weld anything, check it with a light and then you can weld it. I just finished welding the perimeter on, so all these sides just got welded on. Now I'm gonna go through and check every single section here with a flashlight underneath between the table and the rib. I'm gonna make sure there's no light passing through. As I go along, I'm just checking, you know, hold the flashlight as flat as you can and check, make sure there's no light going through. As long as there's no light, that means this table is gonna be completely flat when it's done. So we went through all these ribs and checked with the flashlight, there's no light shining through anything. So now we can go ahead and weld one side of each of these joints. Um, we'll just do that vertical and then the two bottom pieces again with a one inch weld on each of those. Now that all of our ribs are welded to the top, all the welding inside of this bottom section is done. We're gonna pull all of these clamps out and then we're gonna weld in our corner plates and then build our legs off of those. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. The table's looking super flat and nice and uniform. Let's keep going. We've got our tabletop completely welded now. We're gonna grab our corner plates and then we're gonna grab our leg tops along with our hardware. And we're gonna bolt these together before we stick them in that corner. It's a lot easier to have everything bolted together so you can just hold it in there, weld it in versus trying to stick your hand under here and hold the hardware. We opted to get the table with the leg kit, but you could always order it without the legs and then build something custom yourself to bolt right on. When you're putting these corner plates in, don't be afraid to use a dead blow hammer to whack them in there or even shave a little bit off the sides with an angle grinder just to get them to fit. They're gonna be a really tight fit, but that's what you want. Make sure that all the corners are nice and flat all the way around, and then you can go ahead and weld these four edge welds here, and then we'll start building our legs out. All right, we got our corner plates welded in, so now I'm gonna grab these four legs, these are the corner uprights. These are gonna weld right to these plates. So it's a lot easier if this wheel plate is welded onto the leg first, then you can just flip it over. Then your plate's already up there, you don't have to worry about welding over your head, and then you can just weld these plates right onto the table. We 
we've got our wheel plates welded onto these legs. So now we're gonna tack them to the table itself. I like to use two levels so I can level both sides at the same time. These digital levels are my favorite just because you can stick one on each side of the table, zero them, and then stick them onto the legs. And then you know that you're perfectly square throughout the whole table. So I'm leveling off the table itself because I know that's gonna be square all the way around. And then I'll put one of these levels on each side of the leg. And then you can kind of tilt the leg to fit however you need and then just tack opposite corners as you go. So after you've got all four corners tacked and the legs are zeroed, we're gonna add these cross members on here. If you weld around the base before you have the cross members tacked in, the leg still has a chance of moving and going out of square. So it's better to square everything together and then weld it all at once. We've got our verticals on. Now we're gonna grab our spanners that go all the way around. I like to use a couple of these quick grip clamps just to hold the legs on. So you can stick those where you want and then your legs should just set in here. And then you can use your levels to go off the table and just level each leg and tack them in as you go around. We got all of our legs fully welded. Now we're gonna grab our wheels. These are some really heavy duty, all steel wheels and they have dual lockers. So they lock from spinning and they lock from rolling, which is really what you want on a welding table to keep that as solid as possible. We are completely done with this welding table and now we get the exciting task of flipping it over without crushing ourselves. If you're in your home garage, we recommend using an engine hoist like this one. But we're not at my home garage. We're at my shop and I've got a forklift, so I'm gonna use it. We are done with this table and I am really impressed with the overall build quality of this. All the joints line up perfect. There's no weird gaps or anything like that. It really was pretty straightforward. Didn't take any extra effort or anything. So, and this thing is an absolute brick. Like I can barely get it off the ground. So this is only a three eighths top too. They have another size that's even thicker than this. Even though this table weighs close to a thousand pounds, it still rolls very easy with these six inch casters. I can move it anywhere in the shop and lock it down in place and it's not gonna go anywhere. That makes it a really versatile table and really useful anywhere in my shop. These can be picked up locally in Colorado or shipped anywhere throughout the United States. So if you're interested in getting one of your own, they make sizes from two foot by three foot all the way up to five by 10 and they come in a quarter inch, three eighths or half inch thick top. I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you learned something and I appreciate you watching. So we'll see you in the next one.